The biggest satisfaction is to make a prediction and then see it being born through. I mean, <clears throat> it's nice to it being able to explain somebody's experiment. It's nice to uh, unify a body of knowledge by a single concept. But really, the cream of all that is the creme de la creme is making a prediction about a complex phenomena and having somebody find it in the laboratory. That's, uh, sometime you wait. Some, you have to be patient in this business. Uh, uh, we have made uh, a prediction in 1990 about the formation of nanowires. You take a tip, here's a tip. Take a tip, you put it into a metal and you pull it and a very, very pristine, very thin nanometric in dimensions, few atoms on the diameter on the waist, wire of gold. So, well, evidence that indeed such structures form, this was done on the computer. Paper and science on nano indentation, the origin of our interest had to do with atomic scale friction, completely different story. <coughs> 1994, first papers that saw some evidence experimentally to that. 1995, we were fortunate to collaborate with people in Spain on another experiment. 1998, a picture was taken of such a nanowire in Japan by <coughs> an electron microscopist by the name of Kunio Takayanagi. And, uh, and, and, and the thrill of seeing these this wires in the electron microscope, it's worth everything. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really the reward of, of, of many, many hours put into that thing. So predictions, making a prediction is really where, where we make a, a, little, a little V by this, by this particular stuff. From uh, 1985 till today, a lot has changed. Both uh, the variety of things that we can do, the numerical tricks, uh, the computers on which we, we run, uh, the people who involved with that, everything has changed, but the principle is the same and the desire is the same to understand matter on, on microscopic uh, terms uh, to uh, be able to predict the uh, properties of materials. It's not only a question of, uh, of uh, what comes first. Sometimes it's impossible to study uh, certain type of system, material systems experimentally with the details that you can achieve uh, theoretically. So if you really trust your computerized, computer-based simulation, if you really trust your theoretical methodology, um, then uh, your predictions uh, are as good as experiments sometimes. And you can test theoretical concepts which unify various areas by using the, exp the, 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 the theory, the simulation, as real experiments. So you see it's kind of an interplay between theory, experiments, theory, experiments that are done on computers, experiments that are done in laboratories. The boundaries are merging. It's becoming one big uh, enterprise of discovery. So you can actually start from the, from the specification for what you want the material to do and go back and ask what material do I have to assemble or make in order to, to, to achieve these properties. So it goes both ways. I believe that today computer simulations and the use of computers for solution of physical problems achieved the status which is on the same level as laboratory experiments. It achieved um, such um, a significance and such importance, uh, the use of computers for solving, um, uh, using computers to make discoveries. Uh, on the same level as going into the laboratory and shining a laser and measuring the uh, scattering of light from a material, learning something about the material for that, or uh, warming up a piece of material and determining the melting point. Uh, today, theory is in a partner in this enterprise of discovery. It, uh, uh, computer simulations are really different type of experimentation. Experimentations that is done on the computer rather than the real laboratory, but it provides the same the same depth of information and the same reliability of, 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 uh, of knowledge. So it became, uh, became um, an enterprise that is part of this uh, 
global uh, thrust towards understanding materials or understanding matter in our surrounding. Now, in a, to, to in a deep and, and fundamental manner. You know, computer simulations, uh, the use of computers for, for studying nature, this is not restricted to materials or to the nanoscale or to biology. This goes all the way to the last st structure of the universe, uh, supernova explosions, Big Bang, uh, um, gravitational. The, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest challenges is to really understand uh, general relativity and apparently uh, solutions to uh, uh, progress in, in, in that direction also relies on the ability to numerically solve these very, very complicated uh, set of equations. So uh, computers really um, uh, became tools of discovery independent of scale. It's from the microscopic to the very large, large scale.